On this week's episode, we have breakfast with giraffes. Then we head on safari in Kenya with the Cilia Africa. It's pretty nice here. I brought a really large lens on this trip. It's pretty big. It's my biggest lens. I don't even own it. Tamron gave it to me. Just for a week though, not to keep. Unless I lose it, then I have to buy it. I would assume. Welcome to Africa. Three, two, one. I'm Taylor Jackson. I travel and I take pictures. It's always been my dream to have a travel show, so one day I just woke up and did it. You don't have to go to amazing places to be a great photographer, but it sure doesn't hurt. This hotel is straight out of a fairy tale, and even though I've physically been there, it still doesn't seem real. Should you come here? Yes. Do it for the experience and the excuse to take once in a lifetime pictures. While both getting to Nairobi and staying here can be pretty expensive, think of it as investing in your photography career. It's a business expense, not a luxury. Right here waiting for giraffes to come and uh, have their dinner. Uh, Salma is over my left shoulder here, and uh, it looks like she might be the first to head over this way. Drop me a line, let me know how you're doing. Been a long time, you had a got me. Oh, let me know, dear, that you are mine. Cause I've been looking, trying to find the way to bait you. Cause in my mind, you're the perfect match. Quite a Another fun fact is that Giraffe Manor is all-inclusive, which we didn't know until we got here, so uh, cheers. I think that everything here is vegetarian because it's what the giraffes would eat. We are giraffes for the day. I think that they've tried to draw a giraffe in cream in my soup. Maybe I'm incorrect, but the property is beautiful. This is probably the nicest hotel I've ever stayed. I feel like I've said that about every hotel, um, but this one really is. I don't know if a giraffe would be into coffee. Probably not. I keep seeing giraffes in the foam though. See, it's like spotted like a giraffe. It looks like Africa right now. Now it's turning into a flamingo. Now an angry flamingo. And now just a circle. One photography cliche that we hear a lot is that uh, when you come to a beautiful place that you can literally spin in any direction and take a photo. So we're going to see if that can actually work out. I'm going to zoom this one. I shot everything else at 24 though. This is a magical place. Baby giraffe off in the distance. I like mentioning things on camera because then Tim has to go get the B-roll of it, but it's really far away and I know that he doesn't have his long zoom here. So now he's gonna have to go back to the room to get B-roll of the baby giraffe way out there. Waking up the next morning, the giraffes were all up in our space. Probably don't come here if you have a fear of eating breakfast with giraffes. It's an oddly specific fear. Also, there are giraffes in the cappuccino. We're now leaving the Giraffe Hotel and heading across town to the domestic airport. Here we're going to board our small plane to head to our Cilia Africa safari camp. As far as airports go, this definitely has the most dense traffic for 
uh, how small the airport is. So uh, we're going to take our flight. We're the third stop um, in the Mara. So we go up, we go down, we let some people off. We do that three times. And then we'll be at our camp. I guess one of the best parts about this is that you can show up five minutes before your flight and still get on your plane. You want to square, you are a square. I don't mind small planes. I actually got my private pilot's license when I was 17. I spent three summers working 60 plus hours a week to make it happen. Fun fact, you can fly an airplane by yourself in Canada when you're 14 years old, but you can't drive yourself to the airport until you're almost 17. You feel a little bit like James Bond landing in the middle of absolutely nowhere on a gravel strip. On this plane, you can only bring 15 kilograms of luggage, and my camera gear took up about 10 of that. Since we didn't know what we would actually need, I spent a lot of time thinking and rethinking what photography equipment to bring. Our guide Ben picked us up from the gravel strip, and on the way to our camp, we probably came across about 100 different animals. My first frame was actually of a gazelle standing in the shade under a tree, and it is actually one of my favorite images from the entire trip. We're going to take a minute and talk about all the gear that we're bringing. I really obsessed over this for quite some time and made a lot of last minute changes. Um, I have the GoPro 5, which has been good so far. I have an Icon D500 with a 16 to 80 millimeter lens on it, and it's actually been working out pretty well. Um, the images that come off it look really good. On the front, I have a circular polarizer so that I can uh, make the, uh, well, the line standing up. We'll continue this conversation in a second. So the main lens I decided on is the Tamron 150 to 600. This is the generation two version of it. From everything that I can tell, uh, this is a pretty fantastic lens and it definitely does what we need it to do today. I don't know any photographers that have actually been on a safari um, to ask them. So I just kind of did the best I could. Um, I figured that having something easy awning a lot of people said that if we're on a private safari that there is no need for a 150 to 600 that you don't need that range so to bring a 70 to 200. beyond that i also have this uh, nikon 20 millimeter um, 1.8 prime um, has a circular polarizer on it as well uh, that's uh, pretty handy for quite a lot of different things uh, this is uh, for nighttime if we get some stars uh, this is a 1.8 so it lets lots of light in and uh, it will take some great starscapes. And then uh, for video gear, we're using the Tamron uh, 35mm 1.8, which is a lens that I absolutely love. I missed him yawning again. And audio, we're using a Sennheiser wireless pack. It's the weirdest looking shotgun in the world. Um, it goes in your camera like this. But the main benefit for this uh, over the Rode VideoMic Pro is that when you're doing, um, when you're doing something that's a little more cinematic, like coming out here, all the way out here, the road only captures mono, so it's just one channel. Whereas this kind of picks up that left and right channel. So if uh, like a car or a lion or something runs across the screen, the audio actually kind of tracks with it, uh, which is important. I think that adds a lot of, it's a very subtle effect that kind of adds a lot of value to your production. We're gonna go take some more pictures of some, uh, some lions here. We made it to our Asilia Africa camp and quickly realized that it was unlike any place in the world that we had ever been. The idea again was definitely it was to be as comfortable as possible and of course as, as nice looking as we can but to still blend in. We were not going to hang uh, you know, chandeliers and bling bling everywhere. These Makuti roofs, these are uh, banana leaf roofs that come from the coast. They were actually put onto all the tents for that exact reason, so the tents just blend in with the background. Our tent wasn't exactly roughing it. We had hotel beds, running water heated by solar, proper toilet and shower, plus outdoor bucket showers if you felt like more of an authentic camping experience. There were only nine other guest tents here and we ate all of our meals family style. It was actually a lot of fun getting to know the other guests and hear about their experiences. It doesn't feel right to have me narrate this nature sequence, so here's my fiance's brother Ryan Coulter to narrate in his fake British accent. It's afternoon on the Maasai Mara, 
a vast and open space home to a diverse range of African wildlife. A lioness cools herself with a drink from a nearby pond. Ordinarily, she would be napping with her pride, but an opportunity to grab a midday snack is too enticing to pass up. A small herd of zebra graze nearby. A lioness is careful to position herself out of sight, but not out of smell. Despite the zebra's relatively poor eyesight, their sense of smell is very astute. Danger is near. Time to signal the herd and move on to safer pastures. A lioness misses out on the early bird special for today. Her motivations, as it seems, are not all that selfish. A photographer in the foreground snaps several frames with a, and I quote, really large lens. The composition and lighting is ideal. On next week's episode, day two of our safari with Acilia Africa. If you want to learn how you can get paid to travel the world with your camera, sign up for my free five-day travel photography course. Day one, we talk about the travel photography gear that I use the most. Day two is about creating landscape photographs that actually sell. We talk about how you can start generating a significant income traveling the world using your camera. Day three is portraits and people. We travel around New York City and go behind the scenes at a real shoot. Day four is my editing and post-production workflow. Day five is the most important, and it's about how to start getting paid to travel the world with your camera. This course is entirely free, and all you have to do is sign up using the link in the description.